Before coming to South Korea, what did I know? I knew that back in the day, you know, a couple of years after I was born in the, in the late 80s, they had the Olympics in Seoul. I knew they had good food. I didn't know very much about it, other than there was a lot of tension between South Korea and North Korea. I knew that my grandpa fought in the war here in the 50s. That's about all I knew about it. I used to watch MASH. MASH is good. I had that song in my head. Seoul's busy man, uh, massive city, it's spread between two sides of the river, the main part, the main CBD of Seoul, it's dense, uh, super densely populated, and there's like massive high rises, 15, 20 stories, looks like a grid system, you know, it's, it's just crazy. I don't know if intimidating is the right word to say for a city, but it kind of is. Everybody says New York is a city that doesn't sleep, but Seoul, I don't know if they know what sleeping's all about, like dude, that city goes on non-stop. There's three main temples or palaces within the main CBD of Seoul, so we visited them, the girls showed us around there. We found some pretty rad little skate spots, so we had a little jammy sessions here, there and everywhere. So yeah, later that night, spent the better part of an evening walking around, crushing beers, just scoping out stuff, talking about how cool it'd be to skate it. I mean, we're just kind of in the midst of all these hills and just this big urban area. The next day, we decided to actually go and skate that, and it turns out a lot of it was a little more difficult to skate than we had planned. I mean, I always knew Yatesy was like a madman, but this trip definitely opened my eyes to how actually insane he is on roads and watching him drop into that hill that was super steep with all the drugged out chicks around it. That was pretty ballsy and he was going for it but I was thoroughly impressed by his skateboard. So we're skating in uh, Gangnam and it's roughly 10 a.m. and people are just now starting to leave the club. They really know how to do it up here. One village, super ancient. Yeah, we rocked up, we, we wanted to have a skate, and the first thing that I got told was to quieten my voice. You know, there's residents here, and you know, they didn't want to be disturbed, and I was like, wow, this is gonna be a hot spot. We did manage to find uh, 
a few little zones that were a little less heated. Yeah, the locals were super stoked. They were all giving thumbs up, man. It's, it's cool. Like, you know, they've probably never even seen what we're doing in the streets of Seoul, let alone this village. It's probably like 2,000 years old. We got to meet up with some of the, the locals in Seoul and go check out a couple of their, their hills in the area, which are actually pretty rad. They kind of had a good combination of a kind of technical sort of road and then the bombing kind of hill with corners. So we got to mash with a bunch of locals, kind of do some pack run. That's Yatesy's stoke spraying clouds from this behind. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much every time we'd go out for a proper meal, it was always barbecue where you had a grill in the middle of the table and they'd just bring out copious amounts of stuff that you'd just throw on there. When we weren't having barbecue, we'd stop by a 7-Eleven as often as we could. So collectively, we've creatively named these the Triangle and it has pretty much facilitated 80% of the team's diet over the last four weeks. Ingeniously packaged. <laughs> Any city, a lot of stuff going on and you know, me personally, I like being out in the woods. It's a different sort of situation when you leave the heavily populated zone and run into the urban areas and the mountainous areas of these countries and experience the cultures that aren't generally affected by industry and money. It's, it's very much more local and, uh, and real. I mean, as far as the hills go, you drive one hour out of the city and you're pretty much already in hill country. You can barely tell that there's a massive sprawling city like Seoul right where you left because you're just kind of off in farmlands. Traffic is down to a minimal. For the most part, there's just kind of big hills and not much else. And surprisingly good pavement, so that was a very pleasant surprise. hill we encountered was a beautiful kind of layout for a road. After kind of skating down, we started looking around the hillside and we realized there's gun turrets kind of built into the hillside everywhere. So you just kind of see these weird little features and kind of influences on all the stuff that we've been skating that just kind of shows that there's been some sort of major conflict in the past and might still be present, which is a very sort of harsh reminder of some of the issues that this country is dealing with.
after skating some hills, we kind of finished off the day by going to the DMZ, just kind of this big sort of gray area between North and South Korea. It's kind of a no man's land. South Korea has a border that's roughly two and a half miles from the North Korean border, and they just have big fencing and military all along it. Anybody going through there is probably gonna get shot on the spot. It was pretty serious for us going in there. We had to show passports. We had to sign in. It, it did seem less threatening at the DMZ actual line than what it did down at the bottom when we had to show our passports. Me and Billy got a wild idea to try and get a shot on the southern side of the DMZ is this area called the Punch Bowl. That's the only side that you can film or photograph. You know, there's a road that's right running down parallel with the fence line and it runs around this corner. You know, we're here to skate. We're going to skate it and if we get kicked out, we get kicked out. Let's hit it. We went to a spot deep in this hillside where the North Koreans were building a big underground tunnel to basically invade South Korea. We actually got to ride on a little train down there as well. We were 360 meters in the mountain and 146 meters under the DMZ itself. It's pretty interesting that you can see some of the history between the conflict of these two countries, especially when this conflict is still very much so alive and well, and we can go kind of see where one country attempted to invade another and failed. Honestly, they're probably trying the same thing right now, just a different location. We've been driving through some pretty epic national parks up here on the northeastern part of South Korea and you know the first one that we actually had the privilege of driving up, it was just like littered with like colour and we get to the peak and you know it looks wet and you know we're sort of unsure on what to do. The road looks kind of patchy, wet and dry and you know it's like ah oh, this could be good well, I'm just gonna sit this one out and yeah, he's, you know he's already got his helmet on jumping out the car. We're at the top of a mountain. In the middle of a national park, there's heaps of tourists. Don't even know what the road's like. It's pretty long, pretty windy, it might be wet. Chuck this bad boy on for some goodness. And he takes off down the hill and just rallies down this really gnarly kind of just epic mountain bomb where he's, you know, he's passing cars, there's big tour buses parked on the side, there's cracks, there's big hairpins, space pavement, bad space pavement. And he just kind of mashes through it all. Got to the bottom, was like, man, that was fun. That was fucking sick! Wow, does it keep going down? My legs are cooked! Should we go back to the top and do it again? Who wants to skate? It potentially could have been wet on my first run down. I didn't even know, but it was dry. So it was like a personal goal for me to be able to get down in one piece and then to share that experience with, with a buddy of mine or, you know, Billy. The next run down was, was just, you know, epic. I've experienced a lot this trip. I've achieved a lot this trip. I feel that this is this has been in a highlight of my year. There's been some rad roads, it's been some good times with some good people. It, it's always tough leaving a trip like this, especially I've made really good friends with guys like 1JD, the whole kind of mind board shop crew. They've been very welcoming for us and just super helpful as far as showing us around the country and just being very awesome hosts. So big thanks to, to all y'all. How good was that? It's been awesome just meeting the locals, experiencing the culture, and just hanging out and figuring out that these people are pretty much in the same things that we are. You know, there's these things that just, I mean, there's an element of distance and whatnot, and our cultures are different, but at the same time, we can get down and have fun just mashing down hills on skateboards, which is pretty rad. It's good Whoa. to know that there's people all over the place that, you know, have epic stuff to skate and really cool guys. Yeah! What do you think over there? Not much. 
Not even that little We thing? should continue to skate and explore.